Now, why are the Buccaneers so darn inconsistent? Well, there's a couple of reasons, and it has to do with the main problems of this team, and that is the offensive line, the edge rushers, and the cornerbacks, and the safeties. So all these stats, not all these stats, but all of these numbers I'm going to be pulling are going to be from Pro Football Focus. They're one of the best um, sources out there to find information on players. Uh, if you disagree, well, too bad. Then don't watch the video. But um, so I want to go ahead and point something out. Donovan Smith, who's been getting a lot of flack this year for being incredibly inconsistent and just incredibly not good for the most part. Um, that's true, actually. Donovan Smith is ranked the number 59th tackle in the league, otherwise known as poor. He's not been playing very good. He's not been able to protect Jameis Winston, Ryan Fitzpatrick, whoever's going to be at quarterback. And they really don't have a solution to that problem right now. Um, Kevin Panfield is the number 35 guard. J.R. Sweezy is the number 58 guard. Whereas DeMar Dodson and Ali Marpet are in the top seven in their respective positions. DeMar Dodson being the number two tackle ranked the number two tackle in the league and Ali Marpet being the number six offensive line. So right now, three three out of our five starting offensive linemen have poor rankings, be it Donovan Smith, J.R. Sweezy, and Kevin Panfield. And the numbers, in my opinion, they don't lie. These guys have had very inconsistent, uh, borderline very not good seasons, especially Donovan Smith. I would I would expect the Bucks to either you know, move on from him at some point, trade him, uh, or just sign or draft a replacement. That is expected. Um, the Bucks have the fifth worst running offense in terms of yards gained. Um, I believe we've only had 500 or 600 some yards. I didn't exactly write down the number, but that could also be in part because of Doug Martin or... <clears throat> Or a number of reasons. Uh, maybe our running backs aren't good. Maybe we're just not calling enough running plays. Who knows? But um, let's go ahead and shift to the defensive side of the ball right now. Robert Ayers, actually, he ranks pretty good. He's the 15th ranked uh, edge rusher, whereas William Golston, prior to it, I don't believe this is accounting for his injury or not, but he's ranked the number 97th um, edge defender. That's awful, and we just signed him to a long-term contract because he was supposed to be a good run defender. However, he has not been playing to that um, level this year. Chris Baker has been disappointing, as well as Clinton McDonald. They are both uh, ranked 65 and 63, respectively. Um, so that's definitely not good. Our interior and exterior defenders have been playing very poor, minus Gerald McCoy, who's ranked number 13. Um, <clears throat> teams are able to run the ball all over us, and they're able to pass the ball all, all over us because we're not getting pressure. The Bucks have eight sacks total this year, which is worst in the league. The second worst team has 13, so we're definitely a long ways away. We're five. We we need to have a five sack game, uh, and then have the second worst team not get any sacks in one game just to catch up. So that's awful, and that probably won't change. We're probably going to finish the worst team in the league in terms of getting pressure. That's awful we're also one of the worst teams i believe in quarterback hits but or in in getting pressure um so this is another problem is our edge rushers are poor our offensive line is poor minus damar dodson and minus ali marpet um <clears throat> and i'm looking at cornerbacks as well vernon hargraves robert mclean and ryan smith three guys who have played a lot this year we're ranked number 55, number 106, and number 110. I'm not counting Brent Grimes, considering he's been out for half of the season anyway. Um, and our safeties as well. Um, the two guys that have been playing the most, Chris Conti and Justin Evans, ranked number 50 and number 80 right now per pro football focus, whereas TJ Ward ranks number 32 in a limited playing time. But we still insist on rotating safeties. We still insist on rotating defensive linemen. Um... And that's not good. That's not good at all. Um, we're, the, we're the 12th best, I guess, in sacks allowed, but I believe we're one of the worst teams in terms of quarterback hits. So that needs to improve. Um, so whenever you look at why the Bucks are so inconsistent, is it personnel? Is it play calling? Is it a mix of everything? I believe it's a mix of everything. Uh, our edge rushers haven't been performing well, regardless who, of, of whoever we rotate in. That We just don't have the star power there. We don't have the personnel there to make it work. Uh, same with the cornerbacks. We, we just don't have the guys to make it work. And the play calling from Mike Smith hasn't been helping anything. 
rotating safeties hasn't been good as well um <clears throat> it confuses the players they don't know um they they get confused because they're consistently rotating in and out and that's just annoying um and in terms of offense offensive line donovan smith's got to go probably jr sweezy's got to go and you know probably kevin panfield has to go or at least get regulated to a backup role um, we, we haven't been investing in the trenches enough, and that's where it all starts. If you look at successful teams, uh, like the Cowboys, good example, they've used multiple first and second round picks on offensive and defensive linemen the past five or six drafts, and their offensive line is phenomenal at this point. Uh, they're just consistently wrote, <clears throat> if they let a guy walk, they'll bring in a new guy, and he'll be, you know, good. So you really need to invest in offensive and defensive lines because that's where it all starts if you can't create pressure and you can't protect your quarterback you're gonna have a terrible time so what i think the bucks should do to fix this lack of consistency and what jason light should do is he needs to sign and draft offensive and defensive linemen this year i know that's probably a boring um off season but really who cares at this point we have the skill positions there and cornerbacks obviously but that's a given we have the skill positions. You're, we have your quarterback. We have your running back, even to a certain degree. We have your wide receivers. You have your tight ends. Now just get the trenches set so that we can solve these problems. It won't solve all the problems, obviously. Quarterbacks need to play good. Obviously, there's 11 positions on each side of the football, or there's 11 players on each side of the field. So you know, if you have like four offensive linemen, five, or sorry, five offensive linemen, four defensive linemen, you know, that's seven other players on the defense that have to play good, and that's six other players on the offense that have to play good. But um, I can do math. But um, it really, that's all it boils down to, in my opinion, is that the Bucks never really try and solve their offensive and defensive line issues, I believe. And when they did have good offensive and defensive line situations, for the most part, um, they won a Super Bowl with that. Um, so... You know, if, if the Bucks want to break this consist this lack of consistency and this losing record, really just really try their darndest to get offensive and defensive line help. That's going to be huge. It's going to protect James Winston, give him more time, won't bang up his shoulder, so he'll actually be able to play a whole season and get the ball to his playmakers. That's what you have to do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not, this isn't hard. This isn't black and this isn't so difficult i was gonna say this isn't so black and white but it really is it's you know if you have a good offensive line and good defensive line your team will probably perform pretty well and perform better than a team that doesn't have a good offensive and defensive line if you look in the nfl right now the teams that do have the good offensive and defensive lines they're winning and the teams that don't have the good offensive and defensive lines well guess what they're losing boy isn't that a shocker <laughs> now Oh, sorry, I'm sick and dying, but um, I'm not dying. I just have strep throat and a cold. It's fine, and a fever. We'll get through it together. Anyway, uh, cornerbacks. Let's let's talk about cornerbacks and safeties. Oh well, we can't focus on the offensive and defensive line because we need uh, cornerbacks and safeties. You can have anybody you want at cornerback. Well, not anybody, but I mean, great. If I went out there and played cornerback, obviously we're not going to do so hot. But you can have a mix mash of players, undrafted free agents, low draft picks, whoever you want at those positions. Um, if you're getting pressure, that's going to force the quarterback to make bad throws, and it's going to be able to make things easier for you whenever you're going to intercept the ball. If you're not creating pressure and you're not sacking the quarterback, then he's going to have all time to throw downfield, especially if it's a running quarterback. If it's a running quarterback, he's going to whoop you. Cam Newton did it. Tyrod Taylor did it. Uh, and even a handful of order other quarterbacks did it. So you got to improve the offensive and defensive lines or we're going to get nowhere. That's just a simple fact. Like, I don't... I don't understand, and I don't know why Jason Light hasn't done this yet. I don't know why he hasn't traded or signed any more offensive or defensive linemen. He signed Daryl Tapp. Ooh, good one. I, I made a video about explaining how um, Dwight Freeney should have been signed by the Bucks, and now he's playing for, I believe, the Seahawks and having a great time. So, it really, this is just fix the offensive and defensive lines, and and that's that's what needs to be done right now that's that should be goal number one figure out the whole james winston thing you know if you build up a good offensive line and he still does bad i don't know what to tell you 
but maybe get you know I do know what to tell you if he does bad with a good offensive line then get rid of him but build up those trenches build up the offensive line and the defensive line and I'm sure we would gladly I'm sure I'm I'm 100 I'm 100 percent sure that we would see improvement 100 percent sure so that's that's really the solution to fixing this inconsistency at least a little bit not a whole it obviously won't fix everything 100 percent but it'll at least help that's how that's what I that's where I think this inconsistency stems from also um making sure that you have a solid kicker that helps you know whenever and also making sure that you actually play as a complete team you know maybe maybe fix the coaching you know uh the leadership you know that that would probably help because you can't have one unit play good and then the other two play bad you're not going to win games that way you need to play as a complete team otherwise you're not going to win Ugh. so it really boils down to this in my opinion fix the coaching uh, leadership and the coaching decisions that are done such as playmaking and whatnot fix the offensive and defensive lines because that's where it all starts um and uh, yeah that's that's really it Co leadership coaching decisions and whatnot stuff like that you know play calling and all that stop running cover for mike smith stop calling plays dirt cutter just stop it give it to todd munkin oh my gosh and stop rotating your defensive line and your safeties. It doesn't work. Stop being cute. It's stupid. Uh, and draft offensive and defensive lines. And we haven't seen the Bucks do that in a long time. We just haven't. Um, we haven't seen them invest heavily in an offensive and a defensive line for a while. So maybe they should do that. Because last time they did that, they won a Super Bowl. Just saying. But um, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the Bucks' inconsistency and how they should fix it. I've given my opinion. You need to fix the play calling. You need to fix the leadership, coaching, and all that. And you need to invest in offensive and defensive linemen. That's, that's what you have to do. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. But until then, goodbye for now, guys.